think I've never said this on a Nash Wednesday service, but I've had this overwhelming feeling in my heart all throughout the service so far to tell you that I'm very proud of you for being here tonight. You know, the world out there is teeming with self-effort and a frenzy, really, to deny death. And here on this cold night, you come here to have your faces gently rubbed in the reality that you're dust, and to dust you shall return. And I'm proud of you, because otherwise I'd be here alone, and you'd come here to join me in that. <laughs> you know, there's something liberating about being reminded that we're dust. It means that we're completely reliant on God alone. We need God. And this is a night where we're reminded that we're frail, we're broken, we're defenseless against the onslaught of decay. But this is what happens to us each and every day. Yet within us, something's being renewed. The very power of God who gave breath to humanity, which comes from dust, that's the very power that's in us tonight and that will carry us to the other side when these mortal bodies lie dead. They will. You know, behind that altar, we have two urns right now. Urns waiting to be put into our memorial wall, but because it's so cold and frozen, we can't do that right now. So each time I'm at the altar, and tonight will be no exception, I look down, and I see those loved ones who have gone before me and gone before you, because this is your family, for which our Lord Jesus Christ was pleased to give his life and rise from the dead to take us home with him forever. This is our family. And as I've stood at that altar, in front of it, in the case of each of those urns, at the burial service I was privileged to preside over, I said specifically, Lord Jesus Christ, as I put my hand on the ashes, receive into the arms of your mercy a sinner of your own redeeming, a lamb of your own flock. And that's what we all are. We're all part of the same flock, and we have a chief shepherd, Jesus Christ who is the one who gives us this breath of life we call the Holy Spirit. He is the one who has gone before us to prepare a place. So tonight, we get in touch with our mortality, the fact that no one gets out of here alive. Some of us are further down the road, some of us are behind us, but together we're all in the same journey. And we learn in this life to love as Jesus loved, but that's not the end. That's simply how we prepare for eternal love in heaven. Life is not easy. If you listen to that reading from 2 Corinthians, you heard St. Paul talk about the hardships life has brought. And we all struggle, we all have difficulties. I know you well enough to know what you've gone through, what you're going through, what you may go through. I've gone through difficult times. I'm sure I will again. That's part of the human condition. But we need each other. And so tonight, yes, we remind ourselves that we're mortal, that we need God, and we need each other. Because this life is not sad thing when people are lonely and you don't need to be because we have each other and we have the power of the Lord. Now I was walking down the hallway preparing for the service and I don't know why I did this but I randomly looked on the Sunday school board and I just was reading what was on the wall and I thought this child, whoever it is said something very powerful especially on this Ash Wednesday. Jesus to me is the creature that is crushed off. Creator of this earth. Without him, I wouldn't be alive. And my mama, dad, and sisters wouldn't be here with me. That would be sad. And my dog. And her tail. So this child, in, in his or her own way, seems to know what it's all about. That we all come from the gift of God in creation. That God's not a creature, God's the creator, and has breathed life into us, the Ruach spirit, as the Hebrew calls it, the breath of God. And that's the breath of God with us now. Who will lead us home, even as we are dust? So tonight, as I invite you to a holy Lent, let's claim a childlike faith. Let's celebrate the fact that God loves us, God made us, and God has redeemed us in Jesus. And God calls us to rise again to the power of Christ. Yes, I get ahead of myself. Easter is the end of Lent. But we have to start with that realization, too. Otherwise, where's the hope? Unless Jesus
Jesus Christ is risen, we have no hope. And we are most to be pitied as Paul wrote. Now we have hope. And because of that, we can take a sober assessment of ourselves, look our mortality in the face, and not deny that. 